Hey everybody, this is the DSG team back with another tutorial video for PGT developing. And today I'm going to show you how to make a game. But before I show you how to make an actual game, I'm going to load up the game layout. And I'm going to show you all the buttons and what they're used for and what you can do with them before I show you how to actually make a game. For the new people, you got to understand you have to know all the button layouts and what they're used for and how to use the platform itself before actually creating a game. Because if you create a game right away, then you're going to get stuck not knowing what to do. You'll just end up asking a lot of questions and um, it's just basically simple. You can do a lot, um, but it's kind of difficult, so I'll try to explain everything I can in easy detail so you can understand every single button. To start making games, there's this big go button right here, and all you gotta do is actually just click on it. So once you click on it, you'll come to a menu here. Um, it's a lot of games that I have created. I have some exported because I didn't have room on my phone, um, but yours should be empty. Um, and all you gotta do is actually just click on new game, and then you have some options here on the right here it says choose the type of game you want to make and at the bottom it says default objects meaning that there's going to be default objects in whatever game you pick in like um like a player or enemy or door or wall or flooring or just something like that so anyways here you got endless runner uh you got platformer and tower defense and top-down game for today I'm gonna to pick top-down game but I'll explain these um, four options you have here before I continue so any type of game you want to create um, on the right hand side it will show you a description of what it is so for endless runner it says uh, you run forever and jump when you tap the screen so basically when you start the game the player will start running and you basically just touch the screen and he'll start jumping his obstacles so then next you have platformer and uh, it says side scrolling platformer game with a couple player options meaning it just has maybe an enemy uh, a player a door and stuff like that like i mentioned earlier and this is what my vials game is made out of but a lot of people don't use this one um but it's it's really good um so the next one we have is tower defense Tapping on the screen places a tower that shoots monsters on a path. So basically, if you've played Plants vs. Zombies, this is very similar to that. Um, you just create your own stuff for attacking your castle or whatever you're defending, and you can build whatever you want. So it's the exact same as Plants vs. Zombies type of game. And for the top-down game, I'll walk around with directional buttons doing top-down sorts of things. That's basically any top-down game like Dungeons and Dragons or um, well, uh, there's a lot of games that are top-down, but the, you get the concept of what I'm trying to explain. So we'll select the top-down game. Any game is your choice. Um, today I'm going to use the top-down game. So once you've selected your game, just hit this go button down here, and uh, it will start creating the game. As you can see, while it's loading, it says creating your new game. So when it first loads up, it might look a little overwhelming, but um, I'll explain everything and it should be very much easier to understand. So when you first load up your new game, um, it will be a basic concept already made for you, for you to test out. So I'll explain these buttons quickly here. So starting from the left, there is a back arrow button. The next one is your stage and UI selection. The next one is your camera editor and your background editor. The next one is your game settings. And the next one is your play button to play your game or test play your game. Next you have your hitboxes. You have your hints. Then you have your brush your eraser, your moving obstacle, which moves the page, and then you have your layers. 
so as you can see on the layers you have uh, three layers there's a background layer uh, foreground layer and a middle layer so the background layer is layer one and then the top layer is layer three and the middle layer is layer two so to just make it easy for everybody just remember the layers as the bottom as the ground the middle as where you stand as the player and the top layer as like you know the sky for example or whatever you guys want to think that's just how i explain it okay so now i'm going to show you every button what they do so we'll start off with the easy stuff then we'll get into the higher detail stuff later so this green button here the arrow button that's uh, to test play your your game um, so when you press it it will test play this green area here that you're setting up for your stage anyways or you can go to the menu like your stage UI that you made and start from there from the beginning and test your whole game so let's click on uh, pushing this and test this uh, demo game that they gave us so you can see how it works so as you can see on the screen you have a few things on here um, I'll explain them quickly on the top left there's a circle square button that's basically to exit your game. Um, that won't be there in the future. This is just for the beta stage. And on the top right, where it says Hello 5, basically that would say something like life or gems or keys or whatever you, whatever you like. And every time you pick up one of those items, when you line a script with uh, uh, that number, it'll keep going up every time you pick up so if you pick up a key it will say one and then if you pick up another key it will say two and then when you use a key it will say one you know? so we'll add and minus things on the bottom left here you got the control pad uh, which I call a digital pad so you basically use that to move around and on the bottom right you have optional buttons for jump or speed burst or shoot or or whatever you like to choose so let's let's test this game out quickly so we'll use the d-pad and move this guy around and go up go down can uh, go left and right and as you can see like you can always change these buttons later set them the way you want and all that but that's be in another tutorial and as you can see like when you walk around like there's a key in a door that's basically a uh, probably I'll exit door and that key opens the door when you walk up to the door you can't really get through as you can see so it's locked so you gotta obviously pick up the key to unlock the door so we'll get the key we got the key and then we'll go down to the exit button or exit door sorry and there's a sign there and obviously it says there is a sign in front of this house for no reason so that means there's no exit button on here or exit um, portal or stage select Let's check down here there's nothing there obviously okay so this is just a test of game and this is how it looks when you're just testing the main default game but as you add more stuff more layers and more stuff it will, just, it will look a lot better back on the main screen here you got the settings button the in-game settings button you click on that here you got game icon game name and developer name export game and email game so basically export game is to export your actual game uh, email is the same thing as export you're emailing it to somebody or yourself and then you can play it off of pgd uh, the game icon uh, you can change your icon to anything you want um, i'll show you here quickly uh, you got these options um, it's not much to choose from but like i said hopefully in the future you can add your own icons it'd be pretty neat but this is all we have for now now the next one we have is uh the game name you can just click on it and change it to whatever you like i'm just going to put a uh, tutorial um and for developer name you just click on it and you set your developer name now mine is obviously dseg team trademarked but this trademark doesn't show on here so I'll leave it at DHDT. and that's it and just for a lot of people who don't know like 
to change your actual game name, you gotta do it from here. Now back on the main screen, we'll go to uh, camera UI editor. Now here, this is the editor. So you can see that for the background of your actual screen, you have all these options for colors and shades. Uh, you can uh, change opacities and stuff as for your actual background of the screen. And as you see the opacity, you can put them up and down for the clearance of the colors. So you can make them fade or fade back, darker to light. So I'm going to change it to this background for now to show you how it looks. Um, so the camera editor, uh, you have uh, the zoom and follow player. So you can see we're not following nobody. It's just walking around with no, uh, no camera following it. So we'll put that on. Uh, we got the zoom in and zoom out. I like my zoom at 1.3, but um, you can choose whatever you want. You can test it out uh, for different views. It's not exactly as shown, so it's in beta. So that's what it looks like with my background. Next, uh, here we have the stage and UI editor. This is where you create your stages and your UIs. Um, you can edit them, delete them, create them. So when you click on here, you'll see we have uh, a lot of stuff here, but I'll explain it quickly just in sections. So on the left here, where it says new level, keep type, and new UI level. New level is to create an actual stage, a new stage for your game. And the new UI level is to create a new level part of your stage. For example, if you create um, a new level, say, tile scene zero, and then I finish the level, I want it to go to a storyline before it goes to the next stage. So I would pick a new UI level, edit it in a way so I can play the game, end the level, go on to the new UI level, and then continue to the next stage. So new levels to create stages, the new UI levels are to um, add storylines or options at the end of stages or during games or beginning of games. Now on the bottom here, you can see this is what's already created. So I have a tiled scene zero. This is the default scene that they gave me. Um, so when I create a new level, which I'll do down the road by just explaining it, when you create a new level, it will say tiled scene underscore one. And then as I keep adding new levels, it just keep adding those numbers. And uh, you can just edit them uh, after by selecting them and uh, changing the names and stuff like that. Uh, and then at the bottom here, where it says choose level, you basically select one of your scenes here that you want to work on. And you click on choose level and it will load the level for you to edit. Now on the right here, this is... Um, UI screens that are basically um, scenes of the game like um, you have your button screen overlay which is your default game buttons so when you click on that you basically can um, rearrange your buttons, take off buttons, add buttons, do whatever you want with your buttons on your screen you can add health, uh, anything you want on the screen to look on your game you can you can put it on there with the default game buttons or you can create a new UI screen and create something different or similar. And then you have a uh, other scenes here which says default game over. This is basically when you end the game uh, or if you die, for example, um, it will load this UI screen which is the same as this UI level. It's just this is default. So I hope you get the concept. So when you create a UI level, and attach it to a stage it's just continuing the game more realistically so when you die in a game uh, it will go to this default game over um, screen and then it will load back to tile scene one now for the ui and uh, stage select screen uh, i will have another tutorial on this uh, this is just basic for people to learn the basics of it so if you want to learn more about the ui stages and all that uh, it will be in another tutorial so let's get back here and uh, see what's next. So next we have here the hitboxes. Now the hitboxes is uh, basically when you're putting your material on your map here. For example, like the key or the character. 
or the walls, they might have a collider on it. And the colliders are certain things that you can't walk through. And when you hit the hit boxes, uh, it will show you in red where it's being blocked, where you can't walk through. Green means you can walk through, and red means you cannot walk through. So it's nice to have colliders as a border of a map, so then players can't um, go off the map, for example. Now, as you see, as we hit the hit boxes, you can see we're seeing the red. Um, the sign is obviously green because you can walk through it, but all the walls and the door is all red all around. So that means it's totally locked. You can't get out. Obviously, if you get the key and walk to the door, you can unlock that collider door and walk through. You'll eventually have a hole there. And um, it also helps with hitboxes when you're drawing stuff on here or placing stuff, actually. Um, that uh, you might have something on a different layer that's the exact same as you have on one other layer. So if I place a block on my first layer, my lower layer, and then by accident I didn't realize I put another, the same block in the same spot on the next layer or the third layer, it will mess up the game, kind of, com like it will mess up the game. So you have to make sure that your colliders are, or your hitboxes and your colliders are not overlapping each other. And that's what the hitboxes is for. It's for you to see if you have duplicate um blocks on the on your stage here on your development page here and it also helps you out to see if, uh, if there's any other mistakes you have or if you actually enclosed your little map so other people can enjoy playing it so next here we have a, the question mark which is basically um the hints and not hints for anything specific it just gives you hints on how to use everything on this page uh, it's quite new so um I'll explain how it works. You just click on it like this, and then this page will pop up. It will show you all the white boxes around. You select one of these um, boxes, and it will explain what it is and what it does. For example, when you hit the back button, you see the message. This will save and exit your game. And then when you uh, click the UI uh, editor, it says this is where you create and manage your UI levels and screens to flow of your game. Uh, so you get the concept of what this really does as you pick them it'll explain everything for you so that'll be the end of this tutorial um on the next tutorial i will be talking about um your inventory here and the paintbrush and moving obstacles and erasers and stuff like that i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you on the next tutorial